So I've just returned from a 10 day bike tour, which I'll eventually be posting some videos about. On my previous bike tour video series, there were quite a few people who were interested in knowing what items I had packed with me on the trip. So I decided that this time around I'll make a video as I'm unpacking from the trip, showing everything that I was carrying. This video is intended to serve as reference only, and is by no means a comprehensive guide on how to pack for a bike tour. You can easily get away with carrying a lot less gear than I had with me on this trip. So on this trip I had my stuff inside two waterproof panniers made by Giant. These panniers have a roll top seal for the main compartment and a smaller zippered pocket at the front. The panniers clip onto an aluminum rack on the back of my bike. I keep my tent rolled up inside a foam sleeping pad and bungee corded at the top of the rack. You can see I've also got my towel bungee corded on top of that. That's because when I left my campsite this morning, the towel was still wet. I don't like to put wet things inside my waterproof panniers. The back of the seat of my recumbent bike has a fabric pouch where I keep two water bottles. I use a Garmin handheld GPS for navigation as well as for keeping track of my distances each day. All right, so I brought both of my panniers upstairs and I'm gonna open those up in a moment. First of all, I wanna talk about the clothing that I was wearing that I just took off. Um, this is a typical day's worth of clothing. Um, so I wear these construction style t-shirts. Um, I really like them, of course, because uh, for one thing, they're, they're, they're quite inexpensive. You can pick these up for usually less than $15 each. Um, I brought five of them on me on the trip with me, different colors. Uh, they're made out of a breathable fabric, so they don't get, you know, you don't get too hot when you're wearing them. And they dry nice and fast. If you get rained on, usually they dry, you know, quite quickly afterwards. Uh, they're all, of course, they're nice and uh, fluorescent colored. Uh, which makes you nice and visible when you're riding. I figure if you're going to spend a big chunk of your day on the road, you want to be as visible as possible. Um, I also, of course, these also have the strips on them, the reflective strips which reflect headlights if you're riding at night. Um, I also really like these because they have a, a shirt pocket, which is great because you can keep, um, you know, anything you just need to grab really quickly. This is where I keep my camera when I'm riding if I'm making videos. Uh, for my shorts, I wear these things, they're made out of a spandex sort of material, uh, they're nice and stretchy. Um, basically they're the same as a traditional pair of bike shorts and this is, this is what I would wear on a regular bike, if you're, I was riding a conventional bike on a tour, I'd just wear a pair of these bike shorts um, and the difference between these and what I'm wearing over here is that the bike shorts have a chamois on the inside, so a cushion that goes where you're sitting, makes it more comfortable for your ride on a regular bike seat. When I'm riding on a recumbent bike, which is what I was using on this trip, um, these are basically the same minus the chamois. Um, so because you don't need the chamois if you're sitting on a nice comfortable recumbent seat. These shorts are actually a bathing suit. Uh, they're made for swimming in, but they work perfectly well for biking on a recumbent bike with. Um, they're also double as a swimsuit, of course, because that's what they're designed for. So when you're touring and you wanna go for a swim at your campground, um, you don't have to change into a bathing suit because you're already wearing one right here. Um, so first I'll talk about the tent. Um, I've already described this tent in a fair bit of detail in video number eight from my last bike trip series. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna know more about the actual tent that I use. I wrap my tent in this foam sleeping pad. Um, I don't necessarily need this to sleep on, but it does make things a little bit more comfortable. Um, and this thing practically weighs nothing and it easily wraps around this. So I figure I might as well just bring it with me. Um, this is the towel that I used. Um, this is a face cloth, but it's, believe me, it's, this is enough, there's enough uh, absorption in just one of these to dry your entire body if you go for a swim or if you have a shower. So this is the only towel that I brought with me. So these are my panniers, they're both identical. Um, that doesn't, they don't have a particular side that they go on, but I generally will always keep this one on the left side, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, they're made by the company Giant, and they're called, they're just waterproof panniers. They don't really have a model name or number as, as far as I'm aware. Um, and what I love about these is that, you know, of course they're completely waterproof. That top part rolls up, and you can throw it in the lake, and it shouldn't leak, theoretically. I haven't tried it, but just knowing from heavy, heavy downpour, heavy rain, that they do not leak. Uh, what I love in addition to that is they also have these pockets on the front, which are zippered pockets, which I suppose are probably less waterproof than the rest of them, but it's just great to have a place to throw stuff quickly and be able to access it quickly, because, you know, taking and undoing those that, uh, you know, to undo this top part here, you've got to unbuckle, you know, three different parts 
uh, just to get it open and then to buckle it back up you've got to roll it and you know make sure it's nice and sealed each time so if you just got to grab something nice and quickly like your phone or your sunscreen or a little snack these outer pockets are excellent for that all right so i'll start with what i've got in these outer pockets here starting with this one here so on this side i've got my sunscreen which is always good to be able to grab when you're riding and you realize that you've sweated off most of your sunscreen. I also keep a few granola bars, same, same idea. While you're riding, you start to get a little bit hungry along the way. It's nice to have um, some granola bars. Looks like I just have two in there right now, but generally I'll fill this up with maybe five at the beginning of the day. And as I'm riding, I'll just start to eat them as, as needed. Um, I've also got uh, this plastic bag, which has a small uh, shampoo bottle, which is full of uh, insect repellent. Um, I keep this on the outside of the bike because I have had situations where I've pulled into a campsite and started, you know, unpacking my stuff only to realize that there were bugs everywhere and they were biting me and eating me and I wanted to, you know, get that, get this stuff on me quickly. So it's nice having that on the outside and uh, handy and available for you uh, for that same idea. I also keep some pieces of gum, same idea as a granola bar, just to have something to snack on while I'm riding. Um, I've also got this. Uh, which is also uh, another type of uh, sunscreen. This comes in a like a glue sticks type, uh, which is handy again for while you're riding. If you realize that you've uh, you know sweated off most of the sunscreen that was on your face, this is really nice because you can just apply it to your face you know while you're riding pretty easily with one hand, and then just sort of rub it in uh, as needed. And that's everything except for uh, my flashlight. Uh, which is a mag light. On my last trip, I didn't bring a flashlight with me. I just simply used the headlight, which is on my helmet. Um, I could take it off each night and then use this as my flashlight instead. It works pretty well, pretty much as well as a flashlight does. Then moving over to this side, in here I've got a couple other things. Uh, the first thing here is my clothesline. Uh, this is just a piece of, or a, a bundle of, um, I guess it's some sort of th synthetic like nylon type string. Um, I've used this, you know, every night, pretty much every night that I've camped this summer. Um, it's been, you know, really, really handy. Um, basically, I've tied a knot in the end here. So there's a loop like that. And what, all you have to do is just wrap this around a tree and then loop this other end through there like that. And that will hold it on there. So you don't have to tie a knot on that end. And on, then on the other end, when you get to the other end of the tree, you would just wrap the the uh, line around a couple of times like that until there's some friction to hold it in place and again that saved me from tying knots because with this stuff if you tie a knot in it you're not going to be able to untie that knot very easily um, so if you're just able to simply just you know wrap it around a few times there's usually enough friction on the bark on the trees it'll hold it in place and it will save you from ever having to cut this line so you can just keep using it over and over again because this stuff is like a synthetic like nylon type material it's really durable it will last a long time you can keep reusing it over and over again in the same ziploc bag i've got a couple clothes pins um, of course you don't need clothes pins to hang things up but if you use clothes pins you can hang them in a way where they'll dry faster so i just got i think eight clothes pins in there just the old wooden kind you can get from the dollar store um, they work well enough for this purpose and they're nice and small and they fit in there like that and that's my clothes line that i just use over and over again every night. Now the next thing I've got in here is my smartphone. Now a smartphone can be used for a hundred different things. It's being used for navigation, it can be used as a flashlight, it's being used for all kinds of things. I generally don't really use my smartphone for very much other than just what a typical phone is used for, at least when I'm traveling. Um, the idea is because a phone is a really handy tool. If you need to do some research, if you need to look up, you know, where the nearest bike shop is, or something like that. On, or, or you know, you need to call a, you, you get you get injured, you need to call somebody, you need to do something. A smart, you know, having a phone is extremely handy. So for that reason, I don't like to use it for navigation or for other things like that because that will drain my battery throughout the day. And if I get into an emergency, I want to have a phone that's fully charged. So I typically just use this mostly for emergencies. I use a GPS, which is a separate standalone device for my navigation. And uh, it does a really good job for that too. And then the only other thing that I have in this pocket right now is just my wallet. 
uh, which of course I use whenever I have to pay for anything. Um, but generally this pocket is used for other things throughout the day if I'm riding. Um, as I mentioned before, I keep my camera in my front pocket, but if it starts to rain, I'll reach behind me into this pannier and put my camera in there instead. Um, I'll also keep my radio in there or other things like that that I'm using throughout the day. All right, so now I'm gonna start digging into this pannier here. This is generally the one that I keep closed throughout the day. It's got things in it which I don't need very often while I'm riding, things that I really only need once I get to my campsite. So again, at the beginning of the day, I will seal this one up and I generally will leave it closed for the duration of the day. So in this first bag here, this is my clean laundry bag. Um, at the very end of the trip, I don't have very much clean laundry left. I have one pair of socks and one of my fluorescent t-shirts. That's all I've got left for this trip, which is handy because now the trip is over. <laughs> um, in here, I've got this bag, which has my dirty laundry in it. So in there, I've got many other pairs of socks. I've got one, two, three others, plus the one that I was wearing. So as I said before, I carry five of these shirts. Um, I also brought with me, um, I think, six pairs of socks. And that, that's obviously not enough for a 10 day trip. Um, but what I did in the middle of the trip, I did, I did laundry. So if you're, if you're coming prepared to do laundry uh, with a clothesline and some dish or some laundry detergent, then you're able to bring obviously less numbers of clothing than you're actually gonna be wearing throughout the trip. Um, I could have gone with just two of these in each day done laundry. Um, but since I have five of them, I decided to bring all five. And because my trip was 10 days, five seemed like a good number because I could just do laundry once in the middle of the trip and uh, that was it. On my previous trip, I did laundry every three days or so. Um, I did a smaller load, I didn't use a washing machine, um, but you know, it depends on how, how you wanna do it. Um, I also have another pair of my um, stretchy, you know, shorts that I was showing earlier. So I only had two pairs of shorts. Um, generally because I'm, you know, wearing these to go swimming each night, they are getting fairly washed out each time that I do that. Um, so I felt that I could wear shorts a couple days before they actually needed to be, you know, washed properly. Um, so this is my other pair of shorts that I had. The other one I showed earlier that I was wearing. And then the only other clothes I had that were dirty was just more pairs of socks. So then the next thing I've got in here, these are things that I wear at nighttime. So the first thing I wear when I sleep, I wear splints on my wrists. That's because I have carpal tunnel syndrome. The same reason why I ride a recumbent bike. I wear these when I sleep. Obviously this is personal to me, so not something that you would probably need to bring on your trip, but obviously anything that you need to use when you sleep, then you would bring those as well. I've also got this uh, long sleeve uh, shirt, which is what I would wear um, on a colder day or a colder night. Um, I think I wore this, uh, actually I don't think I wore this at all on this trip here. On my last trip, which I did in May, I wore this you know, quite a bit each night when I slept. I would wear this uh, when I was inside my sleeping bag for some extra warmth uh, because that trip was colder. It got down to, I think, eight degrees Celsius one night on that trip. On this trip, I don't think it ever dropped. Um, maybe the lowest was, was, four, was uh, maybe 12 degrees Celsius, um, but for me, that wasn't you know, enough to even war warrant wearing this. I've also got a pair of pajama pants uh, these are kind of light pajama pants. I do have a warmer pair that I didn't bring with me, but I figured, you know, it's a fairly warm trip. Um, I don't really need too much warmth. Same idea, I didn't really wear um, these at all, uh, just like I didn't wear this very much, uh, because my trip, it was quite warm for most of the trip. Um, the only time I did wear these is just one night when I didn't really feel like wearing, you know, bike shorts anymore. I wanted to wear something that, you know, wasn't all tight to my body. I wore that um, instead. If I was to do it again, um, in addition to bringing these, I would also bring a pair of just regular sport shorts, like these ones here, for the same reason. So it's something I can change into at night that are different than wearing just your regular bike shorts. Now as I'm going through this, you're seeing that I'm taking a lot of things out of these plastic bags. These plastic bags are just bags that I had from home. They're just uh, milk bags. Yes, in Canada, our milk comes in plastic bags. And these are the bags that go on around those plastic bags. Um, I just like to bring lots of bags with me. It's really handy for being able to uh, sort your stuff. You know, if you want to have a bag that has your dirty laundry, a bag that has your clean laundry, a bag that has your stuff for going to sleep, it's just nice having a place um, where you can separate them, especially when you're dealing, when you're using your luggage, is this big, this one compartment 
um, piece of luggage, you know, if you just stuffed everything in there, each time you're looking for something, it's gonna be, you know, really annoying trying to find, okay, oh, is this a clean one or is this a dirty one? I can't really tell. You know, it's just nice to have them sort of segregated inside of this big open space inside there. So the next thing I've got in here is my laundry detergent. I just keep a small bottle of uh, liquid laundry detergent inside of a an old uh, vitamin bottle. It's got a nice seal on the top so that the liquid hopefully won't leak out. Just to be sure though, I put it inside a Ziploc plastic bag as well. Um, that's just so you can do laundry uh, while you're out and about. Um, you, you can use it in a washing machine or you can just use it on the clothes in a sink, through the laundry sink or in a shower if you have to do it as well. On this trip I also brought with me, or actually bought this on the first night, this is a four liter bottle. Uh, it's actually had distilled water in it originally. Um, I, the first campsite that I stayed at did not have drinking water available, so I needed to go into town and get my own drinking water. Of course, I drink a lot of water while I'm traveling, so I want to have lots with me. So I bought four liters of it and I filled my water bottles. And then afterwards, I decided I would keep this bottle just in case I ran into that situation where I was going to a place, a campground, that didn't have drinking water. It's nice to just have this bottle and a little bit of peace of mind to be able to bring your own water with you. So I would just fill this up. After the first day, I didn't really ever carry this full. I would usually just fill it about half full or maybe a third of the way full just to have a little bit of extra water in addition to the other water that I'm carrying just because running out of water, you know, when you're in the middle of the country, nowhere, you know, no convenience, there's nothing around you no restaurants, no nothing. It's nice to just have a little bit of extra water that you can use uh, to help you get to where you need to go. Now at the bottom of this pannier, I also have my sleeping bag, which is just a very light sleeping bag. Uh, my sleeping bag says 3M Finsulate Woods uh, Light Loft. Um, it's more than 15 years old, maybe not quite that old, but it's, it's quite an old sleeping bag. Um, it's not a very warm sleeping bag, but it's nice and small as you can see. And it's a mummy bag, which means that after you zip it, zip it all the way up to the top, there's a sort of a drawstring and a hood that you can put it around yourself. So on a colder night, you can pull this drawstring in and you can pretty much seal you know, everything except for your head inside of the sleeping bag, which keeps it really nice and warm for you. Um, well, basically as warm as it could be for a, a light sleeping bag like this. Um, so I really, I like this sleeping bag. It works really well. It's nice and small. It's good for a bike trip like this. And I also repurpose the bag for it each night after I take the sleeping bag out. You'll notice that I haven't shown you a pillow that I use. I don't carry a pillow with me. I will just take some of my laundry and put it back inside of this bag here. And that makes a really good pillow you can use when you're camping and it's, you know, you're not having to carry anything extra or pack anything extra in there. Um, this works just fine for me for using for a pillow. The seat cushion on my bike also comes off. It just attaches with some Velcro, so it's very easy to take off. And I like to take this off at night so I can use this as a pillow as well as what I just showed or I can stack them on top of each other if I want an even bigger pillow. Um, but I like to take this off my bike at night anyway just in case there is you know, rain overnight or even just the dew in the morning. I'd rather keep that off my seat, make sure it's nice and dry so when I start my ride I'm not sitting on a wet sponge. So there's a couple more things that I keep at the bottom of this pannier. Um, I've got another sock which inside the sock there are some clear glasses. I usually wear some tinted safety glasses when I'm riding, but it's also good to have some clear ones as well in case you're riding at night or in some you know, really dark clouds, really heavy rain uh, to be able to see, keep the water and bugs and things out of your eyes when you're riding. I like to have these. Um, and of course, keeping them inside of one of your socks is a, is a good way of, of keeping them so they don't get scratched. I also have got um, a couple extra bungee cords um, in case something happens to the two bungee cords that I use for strapping um, my, my tent and my uh, sleeping pad down. Um, it come, you know, it's good to have some extras. It's good to have these just for around the campsite as well for doing various things as well. I've also got in here some aloe, some solar cane, um, some stuff to put on your skin if you get a sunburn uh, to help your sunburn you know, go away quicker or to soothe your sunburn. Um, the idea is of course you want to wear sunscreen but if you didn't wear enough of it or it washed off and you do get a sunburn it's nice to have a way of treating that sunburn. I've also got inside there some extra spokes. 
Um, my bike has two different sizes of wheels, so I've got two different sizes of spokes uh, with me, just as spares. Um, I went to the bike shop and I bought you know, the size of spokes that were designed for my wheels so that I would have spares um, of them in case something broke. I haven't had a spoke break at all on this bike so far, but of course having these is peace of mind because if you break a spoke, your wheel is all of a sudden gonna be you know, wobbling like this when you're trying to ride. And uh, you know, you could be you know, 200 kilometers from the nearest bike shop and uh, you, know, you don't wanna alter your route just to go to that bike shop just to buy spokes. So just carrying a couple of spokes, they're really light, they're really small, they fit right at the bottom of my pack. Uh, really nice and conveniently. I've also got a couple of zip ties. No particular reason to have these. They're just handy to have. I did actually use one of these on my trip for holding my rack down when I lost um, a part of that rack. Um, so it's, it's just really handy to have stuff like this. Again, another sort of thing to good, good to have around the campsite, just in case you need it for something. And then the last thing I've got in here is this emergency blanket. It's basically just a plastic reflective sheet, which you can wear around yourself uh, to keep yourself warm. Um, I never, you know, have never had to use this, but it's, you know, just good to have it there just in case. Now, two other things to add on the note of clothing. This last trip I did was during the month of July in Ontario, Canada, and the temperatures were relatively warm, but the earlier one that I did this year in May, things were colder. So in addition to the clothes that I just showed you there, um, I also brought um, a toque, which is a wool hat which I would wear at night, like I showed you before. Um, my sleeping bag has the mummy bag feature so that all of your body can get nice and sealed in there so it's nice and warm, but your head sticks out and your head can lose a lot of heat. So it's nice to have a toque that you can wear on your head, keep your head warm. Um, I think I only wore this maybe two nights um, of that last trip there, but for those nights it was certainly nice to have that little bit of extra warmth. In addition to that, I mentioned that I wore, I wore this uh, long sleeve shirt when I was sleeping. I also would wear uh, a pair of long johns, these here uh, on my legs to keep myself warm at night um, so that I'd be, you know, nice and warm when I was sleeping in my sleeping bag. All right, so now moving on to my other pannier. This is the one that I keep on the right side of my bike. It's the one that I generally will open and close many times throughout the day. So I keep the things in here that I'm likely to need throughout the day. So not the sleeping stuff, not my changes of clothes, everything else goes in this pannier here. And uh, so the first thing I've got in there is an extra water bottle. Like I showed before, I keep two water bottles in the back of the seat of my bike. Um, but it's always, you know, two water bottles is not enough for me to be able to get through um, an entire day or even a part of the day. Um, so it's always good to have a third water bottle that's ready to go, um, you know, at any given time. So I keep this usually somewhere in that other pannier there. Um, this is my uh, toiletries, stuff for, for, you know, getting ready at night. Um, so I've got my toothbrush and stuff like that in there. Um, you can also hear there's some change um, in there. That's because um, some uh, campgrounds have coin showers. So it's good to have, you know, your coins in there. Uh, other things like that related to, you know, getting ready at night to go to sleep. Um, I've got some pens in here, just a little drawstring bag. Keep my pens. With a, with a pannier bag like this, which is waterproof, you know, a waterproof membrane, you want to be really delicate on the outsides of these because if you have something sharp in there and somehow it gets, you know, puncturing through the side, then your waterproof pannier is no longer going to be very waterproof. So I'm very careful with things like that. So something like a pen, I'll keep it inside a little cloth bag like this just to protect it, uh, protect the outside of my panniers uh, from any kind of damage like that. I've also got another one of my uh, milk bags. Inside this one, I've got all of my electronic stuff. Um, so it's basically stuff for charging and my radio. I mentioned my radio before. I have this small AM FM radio. It's really handy to have something to be able to listen to music while you're riding. Again, I mentioned I don't typically like to use my smartphone for when I'm actually uh, riding or when I'm actually for, for anything other than just being a phone for emergencies. Uh, so for listening to music, having a little radio like this is really great. Uh, this takes AAA batteries. I bought it many years ago. As you can see, it's very well worn. It's being held together with tape right now. Um, but uh, you know, it's really nice to have a, a radio for listening to 
In here I also keep the batteries and chargers for my camera. These plug into an outlet so you can charge your batteries up. I typically will leave these plugged into an outlet, you know, in one of the uh, comfort stations, one of the washroom buildings in a campground and just leave it there for a few hours and come back and get it. Uh, because of that I write my name on the outside and my phone number and I write do not remove on the outside so that no one will hopefully take them. Um, I did have one experience where I went back to get my battery charger from the washroom and it was gone. Uh, this was before I put my name on them. And um, you know, I was really worried that night because you know, how am I gonna charge my camera? How am I gonna have my battery anymore? Well, it turned out it was in the lost and found, but it would have been a lot better if they had seen my name and just called me and said, hey, is this yours? And you know, I would have come and got it. But um, just good to identify it and hopefully people will respect it and just leave it there. I've also got two of these USB battery backup bank things. Um, the idea with these is that you would you plug them into a wall and you charge them and then you would use these to charge up your smartphone or some other USB device uh, when you weren't near an outlet. The idea behind that is I don't want to leave my smartphone plugged in in the bathroom and just leave it there for several hours the same way I do with these because you know a phone is actually worth something someone would, would take it and steal it and you know try and resell it. Um, so I instead would charge these up and then at, at night I would use the, these to recharge my my phone um, so that it always would keep you know that that full charge that I need for an emergency um, when I'm out there on the road. So to keep these charged, I also have uh, just these USB chargers that plug into a wall, and then these would charge with those. I also carry a pair of headphones with me, which is great for listening to that radio that I was showing before. For filming my videos, I also carry a spare camera. This one uses the same style of batteries and, of course, SD cards that uh, the other camera, the camera that I'm using right now to record this, uses. So it's really handy to be able to use you know, the same chargers and same batteries for both cameras. Uh, this is just sort of a backup in case something happens to my main camera. I have a backup so I'm still able to film videos for the rest of the trip. And then the last thing in here are some AA and AAA batteries. My GPS device uses two AA batteries. The batteries last for a really long time, like more than three days. Um, so I think I only, you know, changed the batteries twice throughout the entire trip. Alright, so the next bag I've got in here is my food bag. It's always nice to keep all your food in one sort of central bag. That means that it's handy for at the end of the day when you've got to put your food somewhere so that raccoons or bears aren't going to be able to come and get it when you're sleeping at night. It's nice to have it in one central bag as well as when you're digging through here to be able to get your food. It's just nice to have it all in one sort of area. I carry, right now I've got two apples in here. Uh, apples are a great food for carrying with you on a bike trip. Um, they are very durable. You can, you know, they get, you know, shoved in here and stuff and they don't get bruised very easily. So um, they're nice to have. It's also just, you know, I, I really like apple, apples. They're a good, a good snack to have throughout the day. And then I've also got a bunch of granola bars. Um, I find granola bars to be a really good food to eat while you're bike riding. As I mentioned before, I would you know pull one out of my pannier and eat it while I'm riding. Um, if you have to ride you know a fair distance to the next town, um, often there's not you know time to stop and have breakfast somewhere. Granola bars are a very nice, quick, easy breakfast to have. Um, I buy all kinds of different varieties of them. So you know you're never you're not it's not like you're eating the same thing every every day. These are made of all kinds of different things. This one's made out of um, almonds, I think. This one's got all kinds of different nuts and things in it. This one's made out of uh, you know sort of more bread type, um, soft baked. Um, you know all different kinds of varieties. Uh, one thing I should mention about granola bars is I've become kind of particular about when I'm selecting granola bars what works well for a bike trip. Uh, when I've got them in, sitting inside one of these pouches and it's a really hot sunny day, um, these can get pretty hot inside there and there's a lot of granola bars that are not suitable for that. Uh, ones for example that have a chocolatey coating around the outside um, or ones that have just sort of, um, there's ones that have like uh, this white yogurt sort of outside on them. Those don't work well when they get hot because they sort of melt and you'll open it up and you'll try and eat it and it's all stuck to the inside and it's like just a big mess. Um, so I try and pick ones that are not, that don't have any kind of coating on the outside and ones that are just gonna do well in the heat. Um, I also try and pick ones that are not ones that are gonna crumble a lot, um, like that are not too delicate because you know they are getting you know stuck inside of a bag or inside of a front part here where they, they you know they're gonna get crammed and misshapen a little bit. 
it's good to have granola bars that are kind of a little bit durable, uh, just because it's it's a real pain to eat eat you know eat a you got one of these and it's all crumbly and you open it up and you just got a bag full of crumbs you know it's it's really annoying trying to eat that so and right now that's all the food that I had in here but throughout the trip there's other kinds of snacks and things that I will have had in here as well um, for depending on the day that I'm traveling so the next thing I've got in here are my flip flops that I use throughout the trip. When I was on this trip, I was wearing just a regular pair of, of running shoes and they were great for riding the recumbent bike. Um, they also were great for walking around the campsite as well as doing any kind of trails or anything else that I need to do. Those shoes were great, but in the middle of the night, if I have to get up to go to the bathroom or do something like that for my tent, uh, putting my running shoes back on, you know, tying, putting my foot inside, tying up the laces, all that's a little bit, you know, time consuming, a little bit annoying. So having a pair of these is really handy just to you know, slip on your feet really quickly. These also, also function well for um, if you're going swimming uh, near a lake or something like that and you need to walk you know, from the, uh, you know, from the shore to the water, maybe there's some sharp rocks or something like that. These are handy to have for that. Um, I also would maybe wear these as well if I go and take a shower for walking back from the shower to my campsite. These ones I got for free many years ago from, from cereal, from, uh, from Cheerios. Um, and uh, they're not, you know, not very good quality. Um, I was finding during this last trip that these rubber parts here were pulling through the holes. I guess the holes got expanded in the foam. Um, I remedied that by uh, buying some fender washers when I was stopped at a hardware store and uh, just put the rubber part through there, made made this part here a little bit bigger and it hasn't pulled through yet. So uh, that's extended the life of these flip flops and uh, you know, basically made the rest of my trip problem free. And of course you can see these are a little bit wet. It was a little bit dewy this morning when we left the campsite. So that's another reason why having these plastic bags is really handy because I can put these in here and everything else in my pannier is not gonna get wet from my wet flip flops. Also got another empty plastic bag in there. As I said before, I like to carry lots of these because it's really handy just to have a couple extras because these get repurposed for lots of things. Maybe I wanna use this for my garbage bag at my next campsite. The next thing I've got in here is my rain jacket. Um, I like to usually keep this somewhat near the top of my pannier if, it, if it's an, on a day where rain is expected because if it starts to rain and you wanna stay dry, of course you want to be able to grab that raincoat out really nice and quickly. Uh, this is a uh, jacket that I bought um, last year, at the end of last year. Um, it's made by, well it's from the store Mountain Equipment Co-op which only exists in Canada here. Um, but it's basically, you know, a jacket which is fully waterproof um, and it's really handy. It's also got a nice little pocket here on the front. Same area as my, my the pocket that I have on my shirt. Um, so it's nice to just keep your camera and stuff in there um, while you're riding if you're well if you're making videos while you're riding It's nice to have a place to keep your camera um, among other things, but uh, this is a good jacket to have um, I've also got some rain pants which are down here at the bottom. Um, I use these less um, Basically if it's a warm day and it's raining then I can do fine just just by my leg, legs getting wet but if it's really pouring and it's really cold and you want to stay completely dry um, a pair of rain pants is really handy for that as well. These are made out of a similar fabric as my rain jacket. Um, and I didn't actually use these at all during my last trip, but it's, again, it's nice to have them just in case you need it. On the note of keeping things dry, the next thing I've got in here is a dry sack. This is for putting things inside. You put something inside here, it's got a roll top, much like my pannier does. It will keep things completely dry inside there. Now, of course, anything that's inside here does not need to be waterproof. But the only thing that I keep outside of my panniers when I'm traveling is my tent. So if I'm riding on a day when it's expected to be raining and my tent's not already wet like it is right now, it's nice and dry, then I'll put my tent inside this dry sack and I'll seal it up so that if it does rain, um, then my tent's not going to get soaking wet. So I don't have to worry about putting up a soaking wet tent when I get to my campsite. Unfortunately, the seal on this one, uh, this usually would go around here. Uh, it actually broke on my trip, so uh, it's no longer working, but that is the intention of uh, having this extra uh, dry sack. It's for keeping my tent dry. All right, so the next thing I've got down here in the bottom is this cloth bag here, which has all of my bike tools in it for the trip. I'm not going to go everything through the, every single thing that's in here, but I do have a video on YouTube which talks about the nine essential bike tools that I recommend carrying with you on a daily basis if you're, you know, bike commuting or something like that. What I've got in here is there's a lot more than just those nine essential items. I've got a lot more things because, again, when I'm riding, I could be 200 kilometers from the next 
from the next city or town. Um, so it's good to have you know lots of stuff in there um, that you you know just in case you need something. Um, some examples of things like that. I also I carry you know some chain lube and some grease in case you need to you know replace an axle or you know do something like that. Or um, I also carry a sewing kit because my bike seat is made of cloth and if it rips then I'm not going to be you know be able to ride very easily with a ripped uh, bike seat. So I carry that. So all kinds of things in there. Um, these are all, again, very specific to the bike that you have. So again, me showing you what I've got in here would not be that helpful because this is very specific to what I'm carrying. But, um, you know, lots of things in there um, for my bike. Um, I also carry these in a cloth bag like this. Same reason I carry my pens in a cloth bag because bike tools have lots of sharp parts on them. I don't want these poking into the side of my waterproof panniers and making them no longer waterproof. This cloth bag is actually made from the old uh, sleeve of one of my shirts. I sewed up the bottom there and I put a drawstring in the top and I've got a nice uh, purposely perfectly sized bag for keeping all of my tools in. I've also got in here my bike lock along with the keys that I use for it. I like to lock my bike when I go to bed at night because you never know what might happen while you're sleeping. Um, it's also a good idea to lock up your bike even if you're in a really small town where you wouldn't really expect bike theft to be a problem. It's still a really good idea to lock it up anyways because if your bike, you know, you go into a restaurant or you go into a grocery store and you come back out and your bike is gone, well, then your vacation's pretty much over. You need your bike to be able to complete your trip. So spending the few extra minutes to lock up your bike is a really good idea. And carrying this lock around, even though it's a fairly heavy lock, um, is still worthwhile to do. Inside these panniers is this little inside section here with a Velcro part here where you can keep some stuff in here, as well as a zippered pocket down here in this mesh section where you can keep a couple other things in there. The idea behind these is again, you wanna keep something that's separate from this big chamber of stuff, basically things you don't wanna lose. Um, that's good for keeping inside here. Um, I've got inside this little mesh pocket, I've got a little Ziploc bag which has all of my SD cards which I use for taking my video while I'm riding. Um, so I want to keep those in a place where they're not going to get lost so I don't keep those with all of my other electronics gadgets. In the Velcro pocket I keep this folder which has various paperwork that I need while I'm traveling during the trip. Um, I've got this this little notebook here where I keep track of a couple things, just a couple little notes. Really this is more for making videos just so I have you know, note of what happened each day for, for one, you know, a couple, couple weeks down the road when I'll be editing the video for that particular day. It's nice to have reference of what happened on that day or a couple little notes to remind you as well. I also print off these paper direction sheets that I create for each day. So this was from day four of my last trip here uh, where I rode from this point here around the bay down to here. And I've basically, so it shows me all the turns that I make um, along the route so that if something happens to my GPS or something happens to my smartphone, then I've got, this is my backup so I can still reference it. This is also really helpful if you're stopping and you're talking to someone and they ask you, oh, what route are you taking? And you're like, well, I don't really remember the names of all these roads, but if you can show them this, and they go, oh, okay, I know the route you're talking about. Um, just, just, just sort of out for interest sake. Um, but I do actually also print off all of the, all the turns that I take along the way. So again, if, if I do get, you know, I do lose with other devices or something happens to them, I do have a, you know, this is my backup for being able to follow to be able to get me to my destination safely. Um, I also, at the bottom here, I take note of the towns that I'll be passing through and whether they have restaurants or restaurants and grocery stores. This is helpful at the beginning of the day when I'm trying to figure out my meals, trying to figure out, okay, where am I gonna stop for lunch? On this particular day, I was passing through uh, Balm Beach. Uh, that was at 25 kilometers in. Uh, that place had restaurants, so I knew that I could have stopped there for breakfast after 25 kilometers. Um, I was also passing through Wasaga Beach at uh, 48 kilometers, which had restaurants and grocery stores, for example. Uh, then on this side here, I made some details about uh, my campground. If I had made reservations, I would have written down, you know, the reservation number. If I hadn't made reservations, then I would have made note of some of the campsites that I wanted to stay at, uh, some of the numbers of these campsites, so that when I get to the desk and they say, okay, where do you want to stay? Well, I've already done some pre-research, so I know, you know, what campsites I want to stay at. And the only other thing which I have left in there are a couple of uh, plastic utensils which these are helpful for having 
for when you're on the campsite. If you want to, you know, make your own meal or you want to eat your own meal at a campsite, it's really handy having, uh, you know, a knife and fork or a spoon. Uh, probably next trip I will bring just a regular uh, metal ones from my kitchen. Um, I forgot on this trip, so I, I grabbed these uh, at one of my stops along the way so that I have something uh, for eating that I did you know, use these a couple times, so they were handy to have. So anyway, that concludes my video showing you all the stuff that I brought with me on my last bike trip. Keep in mind, this is a video that was requested. Uh, this is something that people wanted to see. Uh, by no means am I saying that if you want to go for a bike trip, you need to get all the same stuff that I have. Uh, if you're wanting to go for a bike trip, uh, this is just sort of a reference for you to give you an idea of the sort of things you might want to bring with you. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of this video. And thanks for watching.